checking the box of um, I think what we've been doing really well, which is I think we've um, maintained some really high standards um, in terms of our execution, our intensity, uh, and I think it's just continuing on that uh, on that journey. So I think when we uh, when we started off, and I think I answered this question. I think it was your question only in um, in Chennai uh, that we'd be playing in nine cities and nine venues. Uh, and I think we've you know traveled the length and breadth of this country and played in eight venues, and this is our ninth venue. Uh, and I think what this team has done really well is it has really uh, represented India uh, fantastically. Um, it's played a really good brand of cricket. Um, and we've done that in eight venues, and this is a really great venue, even if I say so. I certainly think it is, um, as as do a lot of other people, to be honest, uh, in our team. Uh, it's a truly a passionate crowd and uh, a great venue to play cricket in. And we would like to do the same. You know, we would. Uh, we know we have nine boxes to tick, um, and we've ticked eight, and we would certainly like to don another really good display. Do our best. It's all we can ask for and hope for from the boys. And hopefully, if we do our best, then the results will look after themselves. Team like Netherlands, which has impressed everybody, how do you see them? You know, especially when you take on the mindset and all those things come into play. Yeah, very impressive. I think I've uh, been very impressed with, uh, with the way they have played in this tournament. Uh, the effort that they've gone through to be able to qualify. Um, I have some... I wouldn't say first-hand experience, but I certainly um, know how difficult it is for associate teams uh, to be able to reach this level and play. Uh, having spent some time in Scotland myself in the early part of the in early 2000, um, spent some time there, and uh, and I know things have improved for the associates since then. Certainly over the last 20 years, you know the ICC has done a really good job of trying to um, improve uh, their standards and try to give their players same amount of opportunities. Of course, it's never going to be the same. Um, the kind of professional setups now of uh, some of the more established teams. But certainly, uh, I think the performances of teams like Netherlands certainly go a long way in uh, boosting the morale of a lot of the other associate nations that they can certainly compete, uh, that they've got some very good players. Um, and it's quite inspiring to see that in spite of the challenges that they do face, uh, that they're able to compete at this level, to play at this level. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, it's been great to see the way they've performed. I know they're, uh, uh, they'll be a well-prepared, well-coached uh, cricket team. And uh, we're looking forward to playing them. Uh, hi, Raul. Yeah. Over there. Oh, hi. Sorry. This is such a pressure tournament that you're playing at home. So, Rohit has shown a lot of cool work composed on the ground. Now, you have always been together. And you have been together for a long time. So, Rohit ki captaincy ko aap, especially World Cup mein ya, otherwise kaise dek? Yeah, Rohit has certainly been a leader, you know, without a doubt. Um, I think he's led by example both on and off the field. Um, some of the starts that he's given us, uh, the way he's cracked open games for us. You know, a lot of times people have sort looked at one. I mean, I can't go into the specific games. I'm sure that you will be able to look into it. But there have been some games where it could have been tricky for us. But the fact that he's been able to get us to those kind of starts has literally cracked open the game. So, in the end, it's actually looked easy. But, you know, I, on reflection as a coaching staff, when we looked at it, uh, we've realized the impact that innings like that, of his innings have had on games like that, that have made it look easy for us and certainly made it easier for the guys who followed in that department. So, you know, I think he's been fantastic um, with his, his batting, the leadership that he's shown and taking on the game um, in leading from the front. We've talked about playing in a particular way. Uh, you cannot uh, do that unless your leader really buys in and actually shows by example. Uh, and it's been terrific to see the way Rohit's done that. And I think his captaincy has obviously been fantastic as well. It's been very good for a long time. He's someone who's certainly got the respect of the group and the team, uh, certainly got the respect of our coaching staff. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure to see him operate the way he has. Uh, both on and off the field, like I said, um, and and I, you know, I think he's truly someone who's, uh, you know, deserves all the success that uh, that he's been getting, uh, and hopefully it may continue. Oh, Rahul, yeah, this side. Sorry, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Rahul, since this is the last league game and India is assured of a top finish, is there a possibility of giving a chance to the guys who haven't played much in the tournament? Or do you want to maintain the same level and take on the intensity to the semi-final? I mean, honestly, we've had six days off from the last game. Uh, so, we're pretty well rested. Uh, and um, the guys are in, in good shape, is all I'll say, without giving away the level. You know, so we've had six days off. We've got one game before the semi-final. Boys are rested. So, that's all I'll say. Yeah, uh, Rahul, uh, you have the inferences. <laughs> Yeah, Rahul, the bowlers have enjoyed bowling under the lights. Like going into the semi-final, would you prefer having them bowl first over here and just to get across to the conditions of the bunker? We've done both things. Uh, to be honest with you, we bowled first. We've batted first in this tournament. I think that's been the really good thing for us in eight games. I think in the first four or five, I think we batted first. And then we had to chase in the last three. So, we've actually done both things and we're pretty comfortable with both things. So, I'm not too worried about it. We'll have a look at the wicket and, and see what we need to do and decide... Uh, what what we want to do. So there are advantages and dis um, no dis there are advantages of both things. I mean there are arguments both ways of you know batting first and putting up a score and hopefully you know um, setting the tone that way. And there's also an argument of you know chasing as well, which um, which means that you know you probably have to bowl in the sun and stuff. But look again, the toss is not in our hands. It's not going to be in our hands in the semi-finals. And I think we're comfortable both ways. I mean I'll just we'll just make it. We'll we'll. We look at have the look at the wicket today and uh, come tomorrow and have a look at the wicket as well and then you know um, whatever call Rohit makes we'll go with it. Yeah, no, I'll do right. Uh, just uh, you said you can make your own inferences, but I'm just saying how do you balance somebody like Prasid who's just come into the side uh, hasn't had a lot of cricket uh, in the recent past. So uh, how do you balance that between sticking to the guys who have rested and who have done the job for you so far and keeping him ready in case the need might arise at some stage. Uh, to be honest with you, you're at a pointy end in a tournament now. So now at this stage, it's about just focusing on getting the guys who you think are going to be playing in the 11 in the boss, best possible space mentally and physically mm. to be able to play that semi-final and hopefully the final if we if we earn it. Um, so that's that will be the single-pointed thinking. It's not about there are times there are times for larger picture thinking and there are times for narrow focus thinking in my opinion and now is the time for sheer narrow focus thinking if everyone is fit. Hi Rahul, uh, just a question on the middle order. You know they have uh, done well this World Cup. Uh, two three games we saw where they stepped out well. So a word on the middle order. Yeah, it's terrific. I mean, I think again I answered this question if I remember in. Uh, in Chennai, and I said that you know, middle orders uh, in one day cricket. Somebody asked me about, and I said, middle orders are going to be very, very important in a tournament like this. You know, they're going to uh, the, how well your middle order performs uh, in sometimes very tricky conditions and challenging situations under pressure is actually going to probably decide how well you do. Uh, while our top orders also perform exceptionally well, you know, uh, I think our middle orders played very critical roles. You know, sometimes you can't judge them by sheer numbers. It's obvious that when you look at a leaderboard of scores and runs, it will always be someone in the top three. I mean, it's pretty obvious. You know, you look at that whole board and it's all filled with guys from any country who in the top three. So, I, that's only gives you one half of the picture, but it's actually some of those 30s, 40s, critical knocks, you know. I can look back on this, uh, this, uh, this whole campaign and look at the contributions of our middle order and they'll come only in sort of spurts or one knock here or two knocks there and somebody done something there or a Shreyas or a KL or a Surya's knock here and Jaddu's important knock in Taramshala. And you, know, you can look at a lot of these small, small things and, and actually that's what really um, gives you those ticks or gives you those wins at the end of the day. So it's a combination of things and, you know, uh, Touchwood, uh, our middle order has been uh, truly exceptional in this tournament. Uh, Rahul, uh, you mentioned Shreyas just now and, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot spoken about him externally, of course, I'm sure not within the team. Uh, after those couple of dismissals, playing the pull shot and stuff. But then he's come back and like, you know, he's played two fantastic knocks since then. Uh, like, what what does he bring to the table that makes him such a special player, you know, at that number four spot? Uh, he brings temperament. I think one of the things Shreyas has shown us is right from the time that I've seen him uh, as, an under, as sort of an India A. He came and played in India when I was coaching those days. And I think one of the things that's really stood out about me is his temperament. You know, the way he handles success, failure. Um, you just look at even some of his knocks under pressure. You know, how he's able to actually uh, 
bring the best out of himself under those pressure situations so yeah. it's about you know you can go on about everyone will have areas that they need to work on and they need to improve you know it's not it's not you know someone might have some other area there's no complete batsman who can say that i can i know everything or i'm very good at everything i mean it's you know you're always going to need areas to improve but in the end of the day you have to be judged by the results you produce and the runs you score and when you score them and i think shreyas you know one of the things that does stand out look at some of his test innings look at how he started his test debut uh, look at some of the critical knocks he's played for us i mean even in the two years that i've been here i mean bangladesh you know that game had extreme pressure who's the guy who stands up you know rash and shreyas guys like that who incredible temperament incredible strength of mind you know and i think uh, you know that's that's what has held him in really good stead he's terrific temperamentally so when someone like him does well you know he's going to make big contributions and mm-hmm. might all, not always work out but when it does you know someone like him is going to make a big play um rahul you meant uh, you mentioned associate cricket a little earlier do you think more can be done outside of icc events in terms of giving them opportunities perhaps through the a team or um, some similar programs yeah i mean i, I wouldn't could go know the exact details of how to go about it in a press conference like this but certainly you know i think um and i think it's really good and it's heartening to see i think the next 2020 world cup had 20 teams participating in it cricket in the olympics as well uh, in 2027 i think 28 28 so cricket in the olympics as well so i think these are really good signs that show that um you know we we're trying to embrace more teams into it it's it's complex it's not easy i mean there are only 365 days in the year there's so much of cricket being played um it's becoming harder even for i mean i know how tough our schedules are and it's very harder for normal the the so more established teams or the more uh, the sort of the non associate teams itself to be able to fit in time and calendar to play each other you know to find that balance yeah but you know like you said maybe the route is to go down a team cricket uh, and then these specific tournaments like this you know their qualifiers their tournaments like um, like having 20 people in a t20 world cup olympics so i think it's it's growing and it's good to see that um It's going in the right direction, I think. Oh, hey Rahul. Hi. Uh, there's just a two-day gap after tomorrow's match before the semi-final. Uh, in terms of the mindset, is a shift required in terms of when a team is playing a knockout game? Does that require a mindset shift? And if yes, how do the players approach that? Uh, not, not really. I mean, I think we just want to focus one game at a time. You still have to play good cricket, whether you're playing in a in a league game. Uh, as we've done or whether you've got to play a semi final i mean you've just got certain skills uh, you've got to execute and execute really well and execute better than the opposition so um you just got to focus on that focus on what you can control which which is your skills uh, your ability uh, prepare yourself both mentally physically as best as you can for the game and then um, and then yeah just just play that game and try and do the best in that particular game Uh, Rahul said, recently we have seen a few incidents, uh, which has, you know, again created a lot of debate, especially on the other side of the ground. Is that playing with the spirit of cricket and maintaining the, you know, rule of cr- cricket? So there is a lot of da- uh, debate on this. So just wanted to know your view or the views of the players who, who those who perform on the field, how they take on uh, in situation like this, uh, especially. you have been during your playing career you have been a part of situation where ms dhoni you recalled ian bell so under these circumstances how do players you know think so i think like you rightly <laughs> like you just you said yourself i mean everyone thinks differently we are all unique uh, creatures and we have our own minds and our own thoughts and the players will be the same you know each one of us will think differently about a particular situation and um and there's no real right and wrong i mean you know, you can go and debate both the situations you can debate whether we have to stick to the rules as they are or you have to sometimes give a little leeway for a little bit of spirit of cricket and there'll be people on both sides of the camp you know and i think just understanding that it's okay to have those differences is fine it's fine to have those differences and you some my people might agree or not agree with certain decisions that were taken others will say no it's in the rules so i'm allowed to do it and that's the way it is you know you can't when someone wants to take the letter of the rule law to the last nth degree i don't think you can complain about it because honestly he's just following the rules as he sees it yeah i mean you might not do it yourself i mean you know we might not do it but you can't blame somebody for following it because you put that in place and you have to give scope for that level of understanding of somebody 
whether you choose to do it or not is completely your decision and you know 